Good day viewers, welcome to a new edition of 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television with me, Manir Dan Ali. Our guest today is a former teacher, actually a teacher of mathematics, an administrator, and a politician. I'm talking of none other than Malam Ibrahim Shikaro, the former governor of Kano State, as well as the former Minister of Education in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And he was also a Nigerian senator. Thank you very much for coming on the program, Malam Ibrahim Shikaro. Thank you very much. It's quite a pleasure being here. The first time. I thank God for that. Thank you very much for the compliments. Um, can we start from maybe what is very contemporary? Your name has been mentioned recently with a new political group, the League of Northern Democrats. We would like to understand what is it that propelled you, I am talking of you and the others in yeah. this group, mm. to come up with this new group in, in spite of the fact that you have well established <coughs> Uh, Pol political parties, parties in the right. country. Are you <clears throat> so dissatisfied with them or what? Well, I would be lahim in a shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. MashaAllah. Allah. Once again, let me thank you for this uh, invitation. And it's a, quite a pleasure being here the first time uh, getting to the office of our very dear Daily Trust uh, group of uh, publishers. Well, I think, uh, you see, uh, it is not a political party anyway but it is a political group. Uh, we have been thinking over it, discussing across board with many concerned minds, particularly up here in the north. And uh, it has always been lamentation, lamentation, lamentation. We've been crying of insecurity, we've been crying of uh, out-of-school children, we've been crying of uh, poor agricultural programs, we've been crying of uh, uh, unemployment and uh, youth exuberance and so on. So uh, we've been crying of what you call bad governance generally. Uh, even the, uh, we started long before the recent uh, protest, end, yes. end of bad, bad governance protest. Uh, many people will think that maybe that was the beginning because uh, we were not heard until uh, after the protest, but it, our, the idea started long before the protest. So we were talking with like minds across political parties, uh, PDP, APC, Labour, SDP, and uh, name them. And uh, we started collecting ourselves and uh, discussing a different uh, discussion cycles. That look, uh, we need to come together. It is beyond political parties. We need to address the challenges of the North. Of course, uh, we are concerned with the peace in Nigeria as a whole, but our region uh, is uh, in the forefront in all of these challenges. So we decided to come together and we name it the League of Northern Democrats. Uh, but what, what, what will be the end game? Are you going to transform into a political party or are you just a prayer group? Well, I think it's not about a political party, even though one may not uh, decide the end when you begin a journey. Our concern is we identified about five to seven areas of concern, and uh, that is where we're going to address. One, the issue of general po uh, public awareness, general societal reorientation, uh, a situation whereby there is general apathy on the day of election. Sixty or so percent of the registered uh, electorates don't turn out to vote. We have to find out what is happening. How do we mobilize people to come out and vote? Uh, let them come out and vote. You are not talking vote A or B or C, but come and exercise your constitutional responsibility Number two, to enlighten people that you don't have to wait until you're given some peters, uh, some materials for you uh, to win, to buy your conscience as to which party or which candidate to vote. We want to sensitize people to understand the need to vote to the right people. Number two, we want to enlighten people 
and also challenge the political parties or even the nation as a whole. The recruitment process in our political parties is grossly faulty. See, a situation whereby uh, the primaries are always being abused, a situation whereby political parties will put exorbitant fees to buy form. Take, for example, the last election. A party saying for you to be a presidential candidate, you have to buy from 100 million, plus the recent, if I will be outrageous, the stupidity. Local government election, you're asking a candidate who will contest local government election to buy a form of 10 million, a councillor, of the 5 million. In your own home state of Kano. No, 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 no. I've seen many other states. I've seen Kaduna State is about 11 million, Jigawa State, 5 million for a chairman, and some others, 2 million. I think it is a little bit outrageous. We are thinking of a situation where the process of recruiting uh, people into office. Because but, by there, but there have always been these fees. I remember recently you were mentioning that you had to borrow one million naira from one of the Kano notables that to be told, able to that is 20, pay your yeah, 20 years own ago, governorship. 20 form. years ago it was five million. Even with that you see, you can see 5 million of 20 years ago is probably 20 million or 30 million or even 50 million of today. But so the fees didn't start today? No, no, didn't, been there. Did, didn't start today. It didn't start today. But it is continuously rising and unfortunately uh, the political parties are not addressing these issues. They may argue that they need uh, cost of uh, processing and so on. That is not uh, tenable as far as I'm concerned. How much do you need, really, to, 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 uh, to process this? Where we leave out the whole thing is right from the beginning, political party members don't pay the annual dues. Which is what used to obtain exactly, in the first and the second uh, exactly, republic. Exactly. But can we come back to the league of northern democracy? You yeah, said yeah. you may not necessarily transform into, into a political, political That is not party, the idea. That's but not the idea. right from the beginning, you are fixated with the next election, which is almost three years away. No, no, Why we, are you starting now? We, 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 we told ourselves, one, the league is not about any individual. It's not a, about any p political party or any group. Or it's not necessarily about 2027. We want to see beyond, because some of these things we are talking about, like the sensitization of change of attitude of the people, uh, you don't think that between now and three years you are going to change this attitude. It's going to be a continuous challenge. But but when even government agencies, including the one you set up, the Aday Data, so, so who in Kano State, yeah, yeah. the National Orientation Agency, agency exactly. they haven't succeeded much. How will you, as non-governmental group with not a lot of money, how will you be able to change anything? Well, I think uh, we don't want to be discouraged by the non-success in court of some of those efforts. At least I'm sure some uh, successes were registered. I see, it, and it's not just going to be just the league that will be doing all of this. For example, we have now written out to all concerned institutions, we have written from Mr. President, we have written to the president, to the vice president, we are writing, we are writing to all the governors, we are writing to any prominent outstanding individual, we are writing to all traditional institutions, the emirs, the chiefs, the former heads of states, and uh, any outstanding person, we are writing to all the registered political parties. What do you want parties. them to do? Well, we, we need their buy-in. See, we need their buy-in. We want to sell out what we are trying to do. As I started counting, apart from society orientation, apart from pro uh, recruitment process, we are talking about education of our citizens in the north. We are talking about the insecurity issue. We are talking about the unity uh, of the north. We are talking about the economic growth. So we have identified six to seven areas, and we have already commissioned various committees to address these issues. You spoke of unity. Unity, yes. As it is, there is the Ariwa Consultative Forum, ACF, which is well known to be the umbrella body. Why not operate with it? Because one of the criticism you all of, you often hear these days is that the North doesn't speak with one voice. That's it. So why That's are it. you adding to the 
multiplicity of voices. No, no, no. Our intention, we've written to them, incidentally. We've written to ACF, we've written to the Northern Elders Forum and some few other concerned groups that are existing. Uh, on, uh, on the day of our first meeting, we made it clear to all of us that, look, we appreciate that we are not the only concerned people and we are not the best of them. We also take cognizance of the fact that there are other organizations like the ACF and uh, we've, we've written to them. Our intention is let's mobilize all of them to culminate into what you probably want to see as the umbrella. ACF, with all due respect, has not been out there and carrying everybody. But I think within the Has last... Has it been excluding people? Well, uh, I have not been a member until recently. Uh, of recent, within the last two, three weeks, ACF has come up with a lot of transformational uh, efforts. They have expanded. I think they have reviewed or they are reviewing their constitution. And uh, the board of trustees has been expanded. The executive committee has been expanded. Almost every uh, outstanding prominent citizen of, of the north is being invited. In fact, we are meeting by, uh, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday next week, the 4th of September. And uh, so this is very hopeful. In the process, if we come across any other organization, ACF, Elders Forum, and any others, and if ACF by any chance decides to play the uh, mother of all, you see the problem, ACF, I don't know whether they are going to change that constitutionally now. Uh, ACF has all along been arguing they are non-political. Non-partisan, yes. No, no, they even said non-political. I think they are now trying to adjust they are political but non-partisan. In any way, there is no way you can check the act of governance without being political. Because the government is a product of political parties, political arrangement. So there is no way you can detach yourself from politics and you still say that you want to promote the cause of the people. What do you say to those who say mm -hmm. that... Uh, these groupings, this elite, these big men who want to make noise are only trying to attract attention to themselves. Mm -hmm. They've been there and they didn't do much differently. You yourself, you are the governor of Kano. one of the most populous states in, in Kano. the country, Kano, mm -hmm. for two terms. Yeah. And uh, many people will say, what is it that you didn't do then that you want to do now? Well, I think... Uh, Maybe at the risk of sounding immodest, uh, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but at least the records are there. Uh, take, for example, the, the, the first number one issue the league wants to address, uh, public enlightenment and societal reorientation. It was my DRS program. And ask anybody on the street, uh, uh, the societal reorientation, which we call Adidi, so we made a lot of impact. Uh, we've changed the attitude of the people. Kano does not experience any violent situation. We have used it to checkmate the religious and uh, ethnic uh, crisis in Kano. It's now a matter of the past. Under our societal orientation, we identified over 140 vices. And we were picking them one after the other. But some will point to you that this recent end bad governors. Yeah. It was very bad publicity for Kanu, the way it uh, happened there, and well, then the level of destruction of Well, property. you see, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, after we have left office, the sensitization, the reorientation was bastardized with all respect to those who came after us. Uh, not much attention is being uh, given to it. You see, it's not about unemployment. One will argue that there are so many unemployed. Being unemployed does not mean madness. If there were proper sensitization with appropriate appeal to the minds of the people, uh, with proper guidance, and uh, we know that our community is largely a Muslim community, and we carried all the ulama along. We carried all members of respected societies. We carried the traditional institutions. The Emir of Kano and myself were chairing the Society Orientation Council. We set up a consultative council of 50 
there is no category of the society that was not represented there. We met every month, and we were always discussing these issues. The Christian Association of Nigeria was involved. Uh, one may think that Kano being almost 100% Muslim community, we involved them. We, in fact, at the end of my tenure, the, the state branch and the national headquarters of the Christian Association of Nigeria wrote me a letter of commendation. We carried them along. So we met even the, uh, the non-house speaking people. I had a Yoruba man in my cabinet. I had an Igbo man, a Christian. I had an Igala man. I had a Baisa man. All appointed as special advisors in my government. So we involved everybody. And this is exactly my wish, is to replicate this kind of attitude across the Federation, across probably as a start in the North. And we want to really mobilize our government uh, to be initiating people-oriented programs. Very valid point you are making there, and yeah. we'll come back to it when we resume from this short break. Viewers, it is 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television, and our guest today is Malam Ibrahim Shekarau, a former senator of the Federal Republic, a former minister of the Federal Republic, and former governor of Kano State. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it is 30 minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television. And our guest today is the former governor of Kano State, Malam Ibrahim Shikaro. Before we went on break, you were mentioning some of the things you did as governor to try to reorient people's attitude. But are you sure it's just the issue of attitude when people are faced with unprecedented challenge of hunger and near hopelessness when young people cannot see what to live for next year or the year after? Well, I think it is certainly beyond. That's why I said what we are addressing in the league is not just one aspect. Change of attitude is, of course, in the forefront and is one of the major issues. We want to address or rather mobilize people, mobilize our governments to look inwards as far as the issue of education is concerned, as far as the issue of uh, economic growth and economic development is concerned. Let me quickly give you an example. When we came, I took issue of mass food production as one of our major priorities. Within the first six months of my government, we ordered hundreds of tons of fertilizer. We ordered hundreds of tons of seeds, uh, different seedlings, and we recruited a number of extension workers under the uh, uh, agricultural program. And within two years, uh, when we came, the experts gave us an estimation of Kano was producing between one to two, one to two, I mean, to 1.5 million tons of uh, grains of maize. But after two years, it jumped to about four million tons. And uh, on and on. For eight years, I was selling to farmers one bag of fertilizer at 1,000 naira. We were subsidizing very heavily because that is the best you can give to the ordinary man in the village. Uh, so we'll, is that the formula you would want to recommend to this government? Yes. We, you see, this issue of agricultural development, we have to face it squarely. What brought the problem of part of hunger is our inability to produce enough food for our local consumption not to talk of even exporting out. But the food is available, actually, is the cost and the uh, purchasing power of people. Many people cannot cope. No, I, I think that is, it, is, it, it is part of the problem. You see, uh, ordinary economics tells you the moment demand goes beyond supply, price will go up. There is the demand, there is the shortage. Of course, you can say the food is always there in the market. But another, so many variables added to the high cost. And part of it is the poor production of the food items as well. What about this double whammy of the federal government? Removal of fuel subsidy, which yes. made everything to, to go escalate. Exactly. And then the devaluation of the Naira, which means Naira is getting less and less value well it is one of the major uh, front seat problem uh, because every item you see in the market was brought there by transport 
And therefore, when you talk of transport, the, quest the question of fuel comes in. And once you have high price of the petrol you put in your motorcycle, you put in your car, in the taxi, in the buses, in the lorries that convey this item to the market, they will have to uh, add up this to the price of the item they brought into the market. So I quite subscribe to the fact that the removal of the subsidy uh, has added and, uh, to the problem of high cost the issue of uh, increase in electricity tariff. Uh, a small businessman that pays probably 10 to 50,000 a month for generating electricity to do his business is now paying 100 or 200,000. And he has to extend this to the product that he's producing. So but I the government is still stuck in its position that it is doing the right thing, that there could be light at the end of the oh, tunnel. Are you convinced? No, no, I am not convinced really because, you see, uh, it's one of two things. Either the government is not coming out with the whole truth or there is bad policy as far as I'm concerned. Up till today, subsidy has been paid. Whether you call it subsidy or whatever name. Yeah, they are now calling it difference. That is what the <laughs> NNPC accountants no, no. are saying. You see, the... the, 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 the the, the, the trouble is that NMPC, whether you call it limited liability or a company, it is still 100% owned by government. NMPC is still government. The fact that it has changed name, it has, been, it has become an independent company, uh, it, that is the owner. The owner is federal government. The same thing with the devaluation of the Naira, the whole thing about the Naira policy, it is the government. So I think whether you call it the difference, whether you call it the subsidy, it is still from the post, from the resources of the entire Nigerian that you are paying the difference. So what do you think should be done differently? Well, I think, uh, in my view, the government should review the issue of the subsidy and come out with the truth. We have had so many arguments. Even look at, for example, Buhari was arguing uh, subsidy was being stolen, it's thiefery, some few people are benefiting from it. But when he came, he ended up paying more subsidy. In fact, uh, I begin to wonder. I think we need to really open up the books uh, to, to, to the public. What is the truth of the matter? You see, if people understand the goings on in this subsidy matter and the NMPC and the sale of our crude oil and what comes into the post of the government, the, the whole thing will be clear. You see, if people understand the reason and it's genuine and it's understandable, people will be ready to sacrifice. Some say for as long as Nigeria is having to import and not refine petroleum products, this matter will still be with us. I totally agree with that. For the last decades, there has been the story of refurbishing, bringing up our refineries back to work. Uh, there are a lot of insinuation that some quarters, some people outside the country, some superpowers and so on are not allowing us. We need a leadership that will face this matter openly, transparently to the people so that let people understand. Do let you think the Tinubu government can do that? Well, if they decide uh, to really uh, appreciate the suffering of Nigerians, they should be able to do that. It's not a matter of whether you can. Uh, you should uh, be able to do it. I think government can do it, and as far as I'm concerned, it's doable. It can but be some done. say the government looks a bit out of touch, while on the one hand is telling Nigerians to bear with the pains of the devaluation, the devaluation of the Naira uh, and the, uh, the removal the, the of subsidy. subsidy. Is busy spending money on residents of the vice president, yeah. buying a new plane, yes. and some say even a new limo for the president. Exactly. I think this is a part of the problem. You say you the, the resources, the treasury is lean, but people see you. Not only the federal government. Is the same thing happening in all over the states? You see the state government spending billions of naira on a particular project. But yet, if you go down to the communities, they haven't very good water to drink, they haven't very good health care programs, uh, there are no medicines in the hospitals, 
uh, the staff are not poorly being paid. So it is all over. And this is exactly one of the things the league is out to address. But what do you think is the problem? You've been there before. You've been a governor. Why do Nigerian governors turn into ten gods? Like, well, they just do what I, they like. I, I think with all due respect, I respect all of them, and uh, we value them as our leaders. But the problem, Malimunir, is that we have gotten to a point that inexperienced people, people that have not had any antecedents of governing anything or leading anything, people think that anybody can come and govern. I, I always feel a little bit uh, constrained to say this. We are not boosting our own uh, ego or whatever. But we need people. You come in to govern 5 million, 20 million, 15 million people. You've never governed 10 people. You've never managed 10 people. You've never headed anything anywhere. Some of them not even their own private enterprises. Jumping simply because you have money or because you have a good father. You think, uh, people think anybody can just come and be chief executive, either president or governor or chairman of local government or state assembly members. So, so I think we... What you are saying is that essentially the exactly. recruitment for, I mean, exactly. for leadership is faulty. faulty. What yes. can we do with that in 30 seconds? Well, okay. I think what we can do is probably still coming back to the issue of societal reorientation and mounting pressure on the political parties. You see, we miss the whole thing in the recruitment of the party leaders. If you get it wrong in getting the correct party leaders, then eventually they will produce the same thing. It's going to be a vicious cycle. Wrong people in party leadership, they will produce wrong people in governance and wrong people in policy matters. So I think we need to really, that is why our number two priority in the league is to address the issue of recruitment process across board, be it party leaders, be it state assembly, be it chief executives, so long as we have the right people in place, people Thank who really have the antecedent, the, the experience, and the background knowledge of what it takes to govern people, then we'll be getting it right. Thank you very much, Malam Ibrahim Shikaro. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Viewers, that's the end of this edition of 30 Minutes. Keep edit with us.